dear precious Joel, Rosan Jean Dorman. It has really been not only a bereaved family, but it has been a bereaved church community because she has impacted the lives of so many. Many believe that her death is really what we call and designate untimely because it hurts so much. But maybe God has caused her to call her home because it is mission accomplished. She has done what he has called her to do. Purpose, purpose has been fulfilled. Mission accomplished. And so we come to, in as much as we are not able to do what we would like, we really would have loved to have had this place packed out with people. Because so that's how she lived. And we know that persons would have been coming to give thanks for her life, to pay their last respect. But because of the protocols established by the government and the Ministry of Health, we can only have a handful of persons family members. We work with that, but it is with pain in our hearts. The scripture says, the eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee trust thee in the Lord forever for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength Amen my brothers and sisters I pause once again to tender condolences to every member of the bereaved family. And I, as I've said, to the bereaved community of the Eastern Park Road New Testament Church of God. With me today to guide this service is Reverend Alexander Sims, immediate past minister of this church and a very dear friend to Rosanne. Also is Reverend Jennifer Brown, who had a great relationship with Rosanne. I'm going to be asking Reverend Alexander Sims to come and lead us into this service at this time. 
as Reverend Brown will come a little bit later. Reverend Sims. Thank you so much, Bishop Clark. Greetings to Bishop Clark, Reverend Brown, the Bereave family, and all those who are watching this ongoing service from a distance. It's a sad day in the life of the family and friends and church family. But we can still say to God be the, the glory. I just thought of Rosen, the fact that I'm a, at a funeral service. I just see her sitting right at that corner and ensuring that everything is in place, that everything is spick and span. She was a woman of order and you could rely on her that she's not going to leave any stone and turn in her plans and her execution. And behalf of my family and I, I'd like to express condolences to the bereaved family, especially to mommy, Winston, the other sisters, and family members. Rosan was my daughter. And if you question it and she was able to answer, she would say, yes, it's Daddy Sims. She doesn't call me anything less or anything else but Daddy Sims. And she referred to my wife as mommy. So she was our daughter. She was my friend. I can safely say she, uh, I was her business partner because at one stage, I was considered the manager of her business by her request. And so you can understand the relationship we shared together and the sadness that is in my heart. And I say to the family today, if you've got to cry, cry. But remember the hope that we have. I'm sorry, my brother, my brother, you, you need to go through the entrance because you need to sanitize and have your temperature checked. Thank you. All right, and so to open up this service, we are going to be singing the opening hymn, How Great Thou Art. And as Bishop says, because of COVID, we can hardly think that we are having no ongoing service for Rosa. But that's how it is. So we're going to stand as we sing together. And I invite those who are watching by way of the internet to sing with us and worship with us and let us rejoice together. I see. 
Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bow our hearts to you this morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, unto us. Morning by morning, new mercies we see, hallelujah. And all that we need, almighty God, your hands have provided so we echo one more time that your faithfulness is great and is new every morning to us, your children. Lord, we gather this morning in the sanctuary 
to celebrate the life of our dear sister Rosan. Lord, we want to thank you for the time that she was loaned to us and the fellowship and the friendship, Lord, that we share. Oh, great God, as we come this morning and as we pause, hallelujah, long enough to celebrate her life, long enough to celebrate in this service. We want to thank you, oh God, and that we can say like Job, the Lord give it and the Lord take it. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord, our God, this morning. Lord, we will not sorrow like those this morning without hope. Because we know, Lord Jesus Christ, that when one is a Christian, that almighty God is not the end. And death, almighty God, is no terror. So as we gather in the sanctuary and those who are listening, God, by way of the internet, Lord, we bow to say hallelujah for the Lord, our God, omnipotent reigneth. We pray, Lord, that whatever we do for the rest of this service will be done, almighty God, to glorify your name. Oh, I pray for strength. Uh, I pray for strength of the family. I pray for the strength of the membership. Uh, Almighty God, that you will be with us. Uh, and you will help us, oh great God, uh, that we would be ready to meet Jesus. Bless us all together, we pray. And the church of God, say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus. You may be seated. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, today we celebrate the life of Rosan Dorman, a fun-loving, friendly personality, woman of class. We celebrate her life. Our first lesson. Psalm 91 through 12 will be read by Priscilla Enriquez, grandniece, and that will immediately be followed by Lorna Perry, a selection of family friend. So let's have the first lesson. Questions there? Priscilla? My check. Reading is taken from Psalms 90, 1 to 12. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the hurt and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou Turneth man to destruction and says, Return ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood, they are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it floweresheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed 
By thine anger and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set out our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three scores and ten, and, it, and if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet it is their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth thy power of thine anger, even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. Final verse. So, each, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our arts into thy wisdom. There ended the reading of God's holy word. Praise be to God. Amen. Lorna Perry. She here? Is Lorna here? I haven't seen her, so we are moving on. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I recall, you know, last time I was here on a similar occasion was when Grandpa had passed, you know, and um, my heart is heavy, and I'm just praying that the Lord will just continue to hold us all up, you know, and I am hoping that I would be able to, would be able to make Auntie proud. You know, and just sing this song as an encouragement to all of us as we look forward to the day when we will see our Father God. You know, and Jesus, he, um, he wept when Lazarus died. And, you know, Jesus, he, he, he knows everything. And he even knew that death would be one day swallowed up. Yet, when Lazarus died, he wept. You know, so we know that she has transitioned to her father's arms, but the pain is still there, you know, and Jesus could identify with that. So with this song, it's an encouragement for all of us as we look forward and live our lives to the best and to the honor and glory of God. If I could count the tears that have fallen it would seem like an ocean to me if my heart were a window you could look through oh the pain and scars you
Hallelujah. Somebody worship God with me. Oh, we long for that time. Get to that place. Their tears will never and their heart break no more. We're going to be having the second lesson. Revelation 21, 1 through 7. When some Morris, the sister, is coming. And immediately following the scripture, we'll be having a solo Malcolm, family friend with a tribute, followed by Devon Dorman, brother, with his tribute. Let's have it in that order. Second lesson is taken from Revelation 21, reading from verse 1 to 7. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with, with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely, seven and last. And he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Here ended, thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. Let me acknowledge Bishop Clark, Bishop Sims, and Reverend Brown, and to the family of Sister Rosan, my condolence. I am here to bring tribute on behalf of Melrose, Audrey, Christine, myself, and family. Today, I choose to wear these colors to include my friend's favorite color. She loved green. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the dead is the death of his saints. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. From henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labor, and their works do follow them. As we celebrate the life of our dear friend, we reflect on the journey she made with us as friends. The words of the song penned by a renowned songwriter, Michael Will Smith, expressed the thoughts in our hearts, packing up the dreams God planted in the fertile soil of you. Can't believe the hopes he's granted means the chapter 
in your life is through. But we will keep you close as always. It won't even seem you're gone. Because our hearts in big and small ways will keep the love that keeps us strong. And friends are friends forever. If the Lord's the Lord of them. And a friend will not say never. Because the welcome will never end. Though it's hard, Rosie, to let you go. In the Father's hands, we know that a lifetime is not too long to live as friends. Today, we can proudly say good friends are better than pocket money, and that was Rosanne. Melrose, Audrey, Christine, and I were good friends of Rosanne. She came into our lives at different points on a journey and touched our hearts warmly. In so many ways, today we say, although you are gone, you will remain in our hearts as friend. Rosanne was a committed Christian, a sister, a friend, a career, a helper, a giver, a supporter, an entrepreneur extraordinary, a singer, a shopper, a traveler, and there is so much that we could say. She was full of life, and she shared this with all of us and others. As an entrepreneur, Rosan was engaged in several businesses, ventures such as laundromat operator, landlord, restaurant owner, funeral director, interior decorator, ice cream parlor owner, store owner. Believe it or not, we all as friends shared in these experiences with Rosanne. And there were times we would say to Rosanne, Rosanne, when are you going to stop? She just kept going and going, always being creative. That girl was just one of a kind. We admire the passion committing and selflessness with which she played the various roles. She was so a go-getter and demonstrated resilience beyond measure. For Rosanne, is one business, for Rosanne, if one business failed, it means another one is about to start. Rosanne would just surprise you. When she decided to venture into funeral services business, our response was one of surprise. Rosanne, of all the things you want to go and do funeral, and we just looked at her because there was nothing that we could tell her because she was going to do it. But we knew that once she made up her mind, it was a done deal. And for those who are watching, I'm just going to pause to say, for all the funerals that Rosanne has done, she always saved those pictures. And every single person has a wow. It doesn't matter how much they were mourning, they would have paused and said, Rosie, girl, how you do it, I don't know. But I've never seen any funeral looking like this. She give it 110%. And I just want to say, one of her theme was in a rose and said, Sis, let me tell you something. If someone is going home, it is the last time they are going to go. You must send them out and send them out well. That was Rosanne. She would make sure that she learned everything she need to know to be the best funeral director she could be. We admire Rosanne's kindness. She's willingly opened her doors to anyone who was in need. Nothing was too good for her to give. Certainly, she was gifted with kindness and hospitality. My relationship with Rosanne was ordained by God. We lived temporarily beside each other in one community. And when I purchased my permanent home in another community, there I was again with Rosanne as my immediate neighbor. Only a wall separates us. 
Rosan played an instrumental role in my family acquiring this home. It was the norm to hear her voice shouting, Sis, followed by her request or comments. It is unimaginable to think that I will not hear these words again. We shared together as family. She was a friend to my husband, children, and my granddaughter. My granddaughter would always shout, Auntie Rosie, Auntie Rosie. She loved her Auntie Rosie with a passion. Or sometimes she would say, I want to go to Auntie Rosie. And her parents had to ensure that they open that gate and get her to go see Auntie Rosie if they want her to really settle down. She will be surely missed. I always remember her last words to me. I sola, you are a good woman. I love you. Each of us had a special place in her heart. Mel, known to Rosanne over 30 years, she will remember how Rosanne was instrumental in celebrating her only two official milestone birthdays. She was like a sister to her. The time spent together, eating, sharing, socializing, will never be forgotten. The ring of Mel will be heard again, but sometimes her last words of her, Mel, I love you, will never be forgotten. Audrey will always remember she cares exhibited when she conducted her mother's funeral. This is so significant to her and her family because Rosan literally took the burden for them and did a commendable job. The moments shared together will never leave the heart. Audrey will never forget the last words to her from Rosanne at that bedside. Audrey, I love you. Christine remembers Rosanne as a fun-loving person who was more like a sister. According to Christine, she always encouraged us to stay in the Lord. Rosanne would help persons she doesn't even know. When I was living in the same house with her, she just wanted to hear someone say that they need somewhere to stay and she was ready to help. At times she gave up her bedroom to help and move things into the living room to sleep. And I paused just to say, Rosanne, I remember the very first time when Rosanne said, sis, I'll be staying in the living room. And I said, why? She said, because I need to give up my bedroom. And Dr. Earlmont Williams attested to that last night of how selfless Rosanne was. Rosanne is gone, but she will never be forgotten. I am happy that I was there with you. You told me you love me, and I believe that. Her favorite quote was, Jesus is coming soon. We walked with Rosanne in life, and we were there on the journey to her death. We spent as sisters, friends, the last hour at her bedside with her. Her last words to us as friends were, we, I love you. We were all loved. She called us by name and uttered these special, impacting, lasting words. We returned the sentiment, knowing that she was on a journey. We said our last goodbyes, but remained friends forever. Today may, today may be a sad day for us, yet we rejoice because we know that she is loved and she is with the Lord. As she shared her last words, she expressed the desire to go home and be with the Lord. I spoke with Rosanne on Tuesday. She said, sis, I have something to tell you. I had an encounter with the Lord. 
And I can't wait to come home to share it with you. I never heard that encounter, but her testimony assured me it was great. She leaves a message of hope for those, for though one of her favorite saying, Jesus is coming soon, so we find comfort in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 to 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Our sister, our friend, sisters for life, till we meet again. Love you, girl. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Devon. Thank you everyone that are here and who are listening and who are watching. And you know it's not an easy time for me because I'm a brother and I have feelings just like everyone else. But maybe I'm feeling more overwhelmed than anybody else. Okay. Roseanne, one of my baby sisters, AKA, they call her Mother Bear. The reason why she, she's called that name because she's always trying to be in control. Right? And she's just, she's one of two sets of twins in my family. Okay? She, Rosan, is a industrious person and she's very social. And she know how to get along with people. She is also a, a, a big, avid member of the church community. Rosen also played an integral, in, integral part of the choir because she loves to sing. She's like a mentor to the younger members. She's a good, God-fearing person. She's also, she also tries to be at, in charge, uh, on top of things, right? My sister reminds me of some celebrity because whenever she dresses, she always stands out in the crowd. The character that fits her, for me, as her bigger brother, is Anita Baker. Whenever she hears Anita Baker song, she's always miming, like she's Anita Baker. She loves to laugh, and she's a happy person. She loves her family, and she cares for her family. She's passionate about the people that she comes in contact with, especially her clients, family, aspiration was to be the best at what she does. Rosan is a perfectionist. Unfortunately, her sickness was sudden, so we had to rally around her the best way we could. Rosan will always be remembered 
as a jovial, God-fearing, loving person. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, we celebrate Rosen. Rosen was slick and classic in her ways, in her dressing, in her lifestyle. Neat and unique, but modest. She was always modest and represented the church beautifully. It's time to worship the Lord with an offering as we honor her life. We'll sing the Lord's My Shepherd of the Wonder Style and we will give
us pray. Our God and Father, in the name of Jesus, we bow our hearts one more time. We thank you, Lord, for the gifts collected from your people. We ask your blessings upon the gifts and every giver. Bless and sanctify and allow that to be used for the purpose it was collected. These mercies we humble us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. We're now going to be having a tribute from the Eastwood Park New Testament Church of God. And that will be followed by a recorded tribute. Let's have it in that order. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Let me greet you in the name of the Lord, our God. I pause to recognize our moderator, Reverend Alexander Sims, and our host pastor, Dr. Clement Clark. I want to also recognize the family members that are present with us, and I use this opportunity to say to the family, on behalf of my family and I, condolences to you today and I always say it is okay to mourn it is okay to cry but don't do so like those without hope because we know that we are going to be seeing our sister Rosanne again amen I remember in the 80s when we sang on the same choir and our dear sister Beverly Blair Morris was our choir director. There was a song that the choir would always do. Angels never knew the joy that is mine. For the blood has never washed their sins away. And though they sing in heaven, there will come a time when silently they listen to me, to us, sing Amazing Grace. It is a song that holy angels cannot sing. The song of amazing grace that has saved our souls. And now today, the tribute for the life of our dear Russell and Jean Dorman. It was the wise man Solomon who articulated poetically in the book of Ecclesiastes 3. To every man, to everything there is a season. And the time to every purpose on the heaven. A time to be born. A time to die. A time to plant. And a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to weep. And a time to laugh. A time to mourn. And a time to to dance. As we assemble here today to celebrate the life of our dear beloved sister Rosan, we are reminded of those words because they speak eloquently to the life of our dear sister who made the transition from mortal to immortality on Wednesday, February 10, 2021. As we celebrate the life of our dear beloved, as a long-standing member of the Eastwood Park Road New Testament Church of God, we reflect on her decades of service to this local congregation. Rosanne gave her life to the Lord at a tender age of 16, was baptized and received in the fellowship right here at Eastwood Park Road, New Testament Church of God. During this time, it was clear that Rosanne had no misconception about her purpose when she joined the Eastwood Park Road, New Testament Church of God, along with her parents and other siblings. Her greatest desire 
was to help in building the kingdom of God. Since that time, she lived an exemplary life for God before her church family serving as a member of the youth choir, then known youth choir, and now it's named Kingdom Praisers, director of singles ministry and rally group leader. She also served on the beautification committee and head of the bereavement committee up to the time of her passing. She was fun-loving, kind-hearted, generous, gorgeous, dedicated, and a very easy person to get along with. Her endearing smile and infectious laughter makes her nice to be near, always willing to go beyond the call of duty to help others. She possessed the gifts of help and generosity. She is never one to forget the birthdays and anniversaries of her friends and families. Sometimes it's just a call, a greeting, or a gift on your special day. She gave without expecting anything in return. Today, we pause to say what a joy it was to have known such a wonderful and genuine person. There is nothing at this time that can fill the void that all of us members and families of our church are experiencing right now. We cannot imagine that we would be saying goodbye to our dear friend. Because at no time did we ever see death coming so quickly. It was on the 18th of January, 2021, that Russell was diagnosed with bilateral pulmonary nodes, a condition which affects the lungs. She was subsequently admitted to the Kingston Public Hospital on February 5th, where she made her transition on February 10, 2021. As we celebrate her life today, we will miss the dignity with which she lived her life. We will miss her faithfulness, her love, her generosity, her fellowship, her sense of humor, and the way she celebrated her Lord with the gift of salvation we will miss just having her around. To our relatives and friends, we say, mom, brothers, sisters, be consoled by the fact that she has lived a godly life. She lived a life we believed was pleasing to the Lord. She has fought a good fight. She kept the faith. And now she has finished her course with joy. Today we believe that, we, that she will receive a crown when she stands before her maker on that great triumphant morning, night or noon. For we know that death is not the end. It is not a loss for heaven. For to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so, I tell you today the final statements of my friend, Rosan. On that day, as we were in the hospital, the day she died, we were all there around her bedside, just hours before she passed. And of course, she was telling us about the pain that was in her chest. And these were her last words. Just let me sit on the chair. There was a chair beside her bed. I know I can sit on the chair. Let me show you that I can do it. I am not going to make it. I can't breathe. I am going to die. 
this pain in my chest, I am ready to go home. What a beautiful day when we walk on these streets of gold. I am walking on gold. I feel it. My dad is calling me. I am seeing him and I am ready to meet him. He is waiting for me. Tell the church that I love them. And if I have done any of them any wrong, I am sorry. What a day when we walk the streets of gold. I want to see you all there. Jesus is coming soon. So I say today, Sister Russell, sleep on, beloved. Sleep and take your rest. Rest, my friend, in the arms of sweet deliverance till we meet in the sweet by and by. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. Now we're going to be listening or watching a recorded tribute. who lived, laughed, played hard, loved unconditionally, and left us a rich legacy of treasured memories. Our swell sisters, both locally and abroad, will share tributes that are indicative lived, of Rosen's impact hard, on their lives. I met Rosen in 1995 when I joined the EPR family. A beautiful, energetic, kind, and hilarious young lady I met then never changed over the years. In February 2019, the twelve sisters went on a cruise of a lifetime, and a man did Rosa had a ball. There was never a dull moment with her and her cabinet men only. Rosa, the go-getter, never changed over the years. In others, and is always shared. She loved to dress up and look classy, but above all, she loved the Lord. For our beloved swell sister Rosanne, it was just the suddenness and the unexpectedness of that appointment that rocked us all to the core. I would have loved to spend some more time with this beautiful soul. Such a joy to be around. Notice first on Norwegian Cruise 2019 and confirmed at a smaller link up at Jolly's restaurant some time afterwards. She is the life of any gathering, jovial, genuine, passionate about life, love, and her relationship with God. Such a wonderful person. I met her only two years ago on a cruise, but in no time at all. It appears as if we knew each other a long time. She and her roommate had us cracking up. There was not a dull moment in that process. We will certainly miss you. This is very hard for me. I lost a children. Unlike others in this room, I met Rosa 15 years ago when I became a member of the EPR family. Instantly we became friends. Rosa was kind, independent and selfless. I will always remember her, especially on my grand birthday celebration on that ship. She did enjoy herself. You said it was your best vacation ever, and I am happy that I made it happen. We will surely miss you on our next cruise. Last year when I lost my father, Rosan played a tremendous role to the end. I am comforted with the fact that she loved God and we will see her again. Denise in Texas says, A star that once shone brightly on earth has dimmed its light, but has solidified lasting brightness in our minds and hearts. Sleeping peace there, sister. Delio in New York, My introduction to you was not physical, but through all sentiments I heard from the rest of the group. Albeit, you were the life of the party. You are needed elsewhere to shine. Sleep well, sis. 
Scott says, Roseanne, God bless the day I met you. You bring new meaning to happiness. Sleep on my sister. I love you. Rosetta says, share happiness in her presence. Didn't know you for long, but it was joy meeting you, Roseanne. And finally, Denise, Roseanne, I was happy I met you. Your friendship was a blessing. You were special and you were a joy to be around. You could brighten up the darkest day and the grayest sky. God only takes the best. Sleep in peace, my friend. Thank you so much. Sorry for the quality of part of the tape, but that's, so I hope you were able to, to hear. All right, we're going to be listening to Barbara Forbes, a family friend, and she will be giving us the eulogy. Can I identify that police officer as one of Rosen's most used police officer to do her escort? Bishop Clark, Bishop Sims, Reverend Brown, pastors who are watching us online, family members. Can you hear me? You're not hearing me? Okay, I'll start again. Bishop Clark, Bishop Sims, Reverend Brown, pastors who are watching us online, other family members, Church family, friends of, of Rosen, good morning. I am honored to be asked to do the eulogy for Rosanne. The Dorman family was one of the first families I met when I became a member of the Eastwood Park Road New Testament Church of God 35 years ago. I consider myself blessed when I was embraced into this wonderful family. I thank you for coming and joining us to celebrate with the family the life of their loved one, Roseanne. If only, if only we could see the splendor of the land to which our loved one was called from you and me, we would understand. If only we could see the welcome she received from all familiar voices, all so there, we would not grieve. If only we could know the reason why, why she left, would smile and wipe away the tears that flow and wait content. It's an anonymous writer. Rosen was born on the 19th day of December, 1967, in the parish of St. Andrew, with her twin, and I can say it was not a competition between them, as Rosen knew she, she would shine anyhow, for her father, Archibald, who predeceased her February 28, 2015, and her mom, Vendris, Dormon, would not deny her her rights. What with this not wanting to wash hair, not changing clothes, wanting to wear only the same pretty little pink and white dress with the bow at the back all the time, not wanting to lotion feet, 
not wanting to wear shoes. These are Rose and pet peeves. Did any one of us ever see Roseanne not well groomed? And her hair was always kept. She wore the finest of clothing. She certainly did a 360 degree turn. When it was time to begin her schooling, it was not a problem as she liked feeding ducks. And Mr. Henry Basic School, which was located in the area in which the family was living at the time, had all the ducks. She would timely fed them and shared her lunch with them. Yes, she did love ducks. She later went on to the Norman Manley School, which is now Norman Manley High. She did well academically. As she reflected on her early training at Mr. Henry's basic school, she went on to be a trained early childhood educator as she remembered Mr. Eric's basic school. Very early in teaching though, she realized that the classroom was not her thing. Razan wanted to explore the world. She was now thinking big, and so she became a full-time entrepreneur. Her first line of business was to open a jewelry shop store at the Springs Plaza. Rosan's bucket list was quite long, and she wanted to make use of them quickly and timely. So she pulled another and came up with traveling. This she did extensively. With her entrepreneurship spirit, she would purchase handbags and on her many returns, she would take her sister Yvette along with her to sell these exclusive handbags. By then, she would have opened a boutique and these bags would enhance the store. You think she finished? No, she just got started. She opened a restaurant in Portmore, specializing in selling Jamaican breakfast and Jamaican lunch. And quite recently, she opened an ice cream parlor along with her funeral parlor. These businesses were operating up until the time of her passing. Rosan's time with her family was well spent. Although a private and quite personal at times, she loved her family. August was her favorite month of the year as she looked forward to going to Portland to her aunt, now deceased, along with her other siblings. The river was her treat. Her double treat, however, was that everyone knew that she loved chicken. So she had to have the drumstick and the thigh, or none at all, along with three big dumplings. Left on her bucket list was her desire to get married, to have a nice home and owning a car. But where Roseanne is gone, her home is already prepared for her, rooms unlimited. She'll be walking on the streets of gold, no need for car. And her bridegroom is waiting to receive her, to drive her on the streets of gold and escort her to her mansion. Rosen fell ill and was hospitalized January 30th, 2021, and passed on February 10th, 2021. Rosen left behind to celebrate her life is her dear mom. 
Her siblings in order of birth, Keith, Jennifer, Devon, Derek, Yvette and Yvonne's twin, Winsome, Stephen, her twin, and Christopher, and a host of family members, church family and friends. And may her soul rest in peace and the light perpetual shines upon her. I thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. A life well lived. Now, my brothers and sisters, I introduce you, I present to you our host pastor, Reverend Dr. Clement Clark, who will give us a word. And immediately following that, Reverend Jennifer Brown will pray for the family. Thank you so much. Greetings again, my brothers and sisters. I want to once again tend the condolences to the bereaved family, and I do so on behalf of my biological family, as well as a grieving church family. I want to greet my fellow colleagues in ministry, um, Bishop Sims and Reverend Brown, and I want especially to greet those, our viewing and listening audience on the social platform, media platforms. And I know that there are many persons who are viewing and listening. If last night's prayer meeting was any indication, and I know that we might have hundreds listening right now because in the prayer meeting itself, there was over 100 persons who were on the platform. And so I want to um, greet all of those, not only, and, and a number of ministers were included in that, um, some Jama from Jamaica and others from the diaspora. So I want to greet all of you. And my goodness, if you were in the prayer meeting, you would understand who Rosan Dorman really was. Because the tributes were glowing. And rightly so, because for the very short time that I knew her, she was such a special person. She came and she you know, decided that she wanted to meet me personally in my office and to let me know what business she was and her plans um, for the future. You know, as I listened to those tributes, I. As I said last evening, that I remember at, as I pastored at Epping Forest in Manchester, there was a young brother there who, he was so much like Jesus. He just lived for others, not for himself. And I remember when, they, when those of the workplace came to do a tribute for him, well, the person who, was, who actually did the tribute said that then, you know, they believed that up in heaven he would have a, a very special place, maybe an angel. 
And I said to myself, even though his theology was wanting, but his sentiments I had to embrace. Because somebody who lived on earth like that must have a special place in heaven. And so I want to just use a few minutes to give a comforting word taken from Psalm 23. And the first verse, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Before we look exactly on what that means, my brothers and sisters, could I just say a few things quickly about the Psalms as a whole. They were not all written by David. 73 have been attributed to him. Other names associated with the writing of the Psalms are Asaph and sons of Korah, Solomon, Moses. They all contributed to the Psalm. But the Psalm was... was was the hymn book of Israel. The Psalms was the hymn book of Israel and contained songs that were sung on different occasions in Israelite life. They would be sung at festival time. And you know those three great festivals that the Jews had, the Passover, the Tabernacle, and the Pentecost. And so they would sing those and those the, who, who were uh, of the diaspora, who were pilgrims coming to those festivals. You know, they would sing the psalms as they traveled. Uh, you know, they were sung at times of adoration and praise um, to Almighty God, but also sung at times of lament. I want you to know that different circumstances of life Occasion the penning of many of these psalms. Oh, some were done in the times of confession. Like David in Psalm 51, he said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgression. Some were, were um, occasioned by the passion for revenge. And those are called the imprecatory psalms. And they were, they were penned, my brothers and sisters, for, because David and others were seeking to get revenge, oh God, from their enemies. They would ask God to let the children of those who hurt them become vagabonds and beggars and other things. But they, some came out of worship experience, um, and the, the, the writer said, Oh, magnify the Lord with me um, and let us exalt his name together. Some were, came out of times of distress, my brothers and sisters. Um, like David, he said, Why hast thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. And some were brought out of situations of victory. And when they had gotten victory from God, they would use those, write a song or a psalm about it. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Oh, hallelujah. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh. They stumbled and fell. My brothers and sisters, they were found to be especially precious as a mode of expression for those who were in need. They were born, my brothers and sisters, out of hearts that were oppressed and cast down. Oh, hallelujah. Out of hearts that were hopeless and chastened, hearts that were broken in two. 
And I know that this is a psalm that would speak to the situation of the family right now. Oh, hallelujah. Because I know that some are cast down as tears, um, you know, come. But tears is always a language that God understands. But my brothers and sisters, Psalm 23 has been, um, 23 has been all things to all men. It has been called the pearl of the Psalms. There the Christians have found comfort and solace. But not only Christians, I think uh, everybody unsaved, they have found meaning. The downtrodden have found a hope, oh my God, in the, the book of the Psalms. But especially in Psalm 23. Three. Many are the broken hearted, many are the downtrodden that have found renewed hope and an anchor for their souls in the midst of the stormy blast of life um, because of Psalm 23. It was Charles Purge and the Prince of Preachers. He said, it has been said that what the nightingale is among birds is... is that is this divine song among the Psalms, for it has sung sweetly in the ears of many a mourners in the night of weeping, and has bidden him hope for a morning of joy. So my brothers and sisters, the Lord is my shepherd, is a good psalm for us to reflect on in this time, in the seas of grief and loss. So the Lord is my shepherd. My brothers and sisters, what does that mean? Who is the Lord? What is his character? What are his credentials to be my owner, my shepherd, my manager? Who is he? My brothers and sisters, the person speaking is David a shepherd? He is the son of a shepherd as well. And he's regarded as the shepherd king of Israel. And this cannot be taken lightly. But who is the Lord? To whom did David refer? The Lord. He is my shepherd. God, my brothers and sisters, had revealed himself to the children of Israel under various names. Because name and name in the Jewish society, especially of God, meant all that was true of God. And all that had been revealed concerning God. That is God in all his attributes. God in all that he is in and of himself, God in all that he has done, and God in all that he is doing. God had used the term concerning himself, El, oh hallelujah, our Elohim. And my brothers and sisters, that means his strength, his might, his power. When he used that name, he was giving them a sense of his might, his dominion, and his power. My brothers and sisters, when he said in Genesis 1, let us make man, that was the God because it shows his creative might. But my brothers and sisters, he also revealed himself as Jehovah. My brothers and sisters, the self-existent one, the I am that I am, eternally self-existent one. My brothers and sisters, that's the God that we're talking about. He's the absolute present tense. He is the, uh, somebody say, he's the God of ages past. He's the light of the present and he's the hope of the future. My brothers and sisters, but God would be to his people what Ever they wanted him to be and God can be that to the family today oh my brothers and sisters according to your circumstance that's how God can be revealed to you because to Jehovah was added a name that depicted and portrayed who he was in a given situation oh my brothers and sisters in times of need he was Jehovah Jireh the Lord who provides and he is a provider right now 
now for all of us my brothers and sisters in the time of sickness is Jehovah Rapha the Lord that healed thee hallelujah oh hallelujah in the times of opposition and struggle my brothers and sisters he's Jehovah Nissi the Lord our banner who fights our battles oh hallelujah and when he says I am come down oh, to deliver it means he's coming to do battle for his people but he is Jehovah banner but he is oh hallelujah in times of family trauma and rest he's Jehovah shalom the Lord our peace when we need guidance my brothers and sisters when we need care and guidance he is Jehovah Raha the Lord our shepherd and when we have been a spiritual failure he is Jehovah Sidkinu the Lord our righteous and when I am alone and feel left and forgotten my brothers and sisters he is Jehovah Shama and that is the God who is present and so he is present in every circumstance what Whatever context you have, I want to allow the family to know that the Lord is with you today and the Lord will see you through. Oh, hallelujah, my brothers and sisters. That's who the Lord is. But I'm not even finished. He's El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one, the many-breasted one, the strong one. Oh, hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, he's all all sufficient is eminently qualified my brothers and sisters that's who the Lord is and I want the family to know that the Lord is yours this, uh, this afternoon still morning oh hallelujah the Lord so the Lord is my shepherd, my brothers and sisters, I soon close. The Lord is my shepherd, uh, links us, oh, come and clay with divinity. My brothers and sisters, it means that a mere mortal becomes the cherished object of divine diligence. My God, what condescension to think that God is deeply concerned about me as an individual. I want you to know that God is concerned about you, every individual in the family. God is concerned about you. And so this lends enormous dignity to me oh, and to all of us as an individual. And so my brothers and sisters, we can oh you see persons can boast about their family background and their status but some of us we don't have any family background that we can boast about but we can boast that we have a God oh hallelujah who is the all sufficient one who is provider who is um, preserver who is everything that we ask him to be my brothers and sisters somebody praise God oh hallelujah 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 yes my brothers and sisters give this this gives purpose and enormous meaning to my short sojourn here on planet earth David is not here speaking as the shepherd my brothers and sisters great shepherd though he is is speaking as being a sheep my brothers and sisters he's, he knows what it is to be a good shepherd because a, a sheep more than anybody would know a good shepherd is speaking as the sheep he said the Lord is my shepherd oh hallelujah he spoke with tremendous pride it's as if he's saying do you know who my owner is do you know who is my manager do you know whose I am 
my God, do you know whose I am? It reminds me, brothers and sisters, that's who I'm going to close in a minute. It reminds me of Paul as he was on the ship going to Rome and there was storm and the sea and Paul told the ship um, um, person in charge of the captain. He said, oh, my, you, you, I'm gonna, you should not have left out from Caesarea. But he said, even though you left out, I want you to know that I was praying last night. And while I was praying, an angel came to me and said, Paul, oh, hallelujah, who, you, whose I am and whom, oh, hallelujah, the God whom I serve and whose I am that's what Paul said to those men we need to know whose we are and who we are he said the God whose I, whom I serve and whose I am we need to know whose we are my God I feel good that the Lord is my shepherd Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He's my shepherd, my brothers and sisters. And so as I close, I want to ask you um, to understand that whatever you're going through now, if Jesus Christ is with you, you're all right. Because look at who my shepherd is. David was saying, he's more than enough. He's my owner. He's my manager. He's my provider. He's my preserver is my everything that's who the God that I serve is and I want you to know that he can be your God and your shepherd as well could I close with that yes he can be your shepherd if you want him to be But if you're gonna, he's going to be your shepherd, you will have to surrender to him as his sheep. Are you willing to do that? Is the question. Because you see, my brothers and sisters, if I had time, we would look in the aspect of I don't, I shall not want the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Because you know that your shepherd, oh hallelujah, is going to take care of you. And you don't need to look across the fence at the other sheep because you are well taken care of. Hallelujah. I want to challenge you. Hallelujah. I feel good in my shepherd's hand. I wonder if there's anybody who today, just a few of us here, just a very, not even a good handful. But is there someone who needs the Lord as his or her shepherd? In other words, you know that God is not in charge of your life. And you want him today to take full charge. If you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord, could you indicate now and let me pray for you? Is there anybody? Hallelujah. It feels good to be the shepherd, the sheep of the Almighty God. God bless you. God bless you richly. Reverend Jennifer Brown will come at this time and pray for the family. God bless you richly.
Let us pray. Oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with our griefs. And when the days are weary, the long nights are dreary, I know my Jesus cares. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If you should draw yourself from us, there is none to whom we can turn. God, we are so grateful that you are our shepherd. And we belong to you. There is no doubt in our minds, Lord, whose we are and to whom we belong. Oh, thank you, we belong to Jesus, the good shepherd, the one who loves us with an everlasting love, the one who is capable of taking care of every one of us, almighty God. And so even as we celebrate the life of our dear departed sister Lord, we celebrate you today in thanksgiving that you are indeed our shepherd. Lord, I lift up the family of Sister Russ unto you now, Lord. Father, I know, Almighty God, that even as we celebrate, there are emotional pains at this time, Lord. There are more questions than answers, Almighty God. And oh, God Almighty, they may never get the answers to the questions that they're asking, Almighty God. But divine God, holy and righteous thou art. Lord, I pray as I lift them up on wings of prayer before your throne. Oh God, you know just how to heal wounded broken spirits almighty God you know just how to lift up those who are weak and feeble almighty God you are the great shepherd and so God even as we pray I ask you for strength for mama oh God I pray that you will dry every tear she might have been shedding, Almighty God. Lord, I lift up the brothers and the sisters, uh, the nieces, oh God, and the extended family. I ask you, Almighty God, Sovereign God of the universe, uh, I pray, Divine God, uh, that you will undergird them with your strength. Oh God, in the dark of the night, when the questions are coming, Almighty God, I ask you that you will be the answer to every question that they may ask. And Almighty God, in the times of their weakness, you will be their strength. Holy God of Israel, you are almighty God and you are the great shepherd. So God, oh, I am resting on the word of God that you will take care. God, I am standing on the promise of the word of God that you will never leave them nor forsake them. Almighty God, I've been true enough to know that you have been enough for them. Oh God, you have come through so many times that I set our minds at ease. And even as we pray, we will stake our very life that Jesus you will take care like nobody else can. 
Oh God, we cry on behalf of the family today. So God, take control, King Jesus. We entrust the rest of this service into your care and as we journey to the final resting place almighty God go with us be with us be the provider that you can be the guide almighty God that only you can be their strength be your shoulder to lean on be mother and father and friend and husband to them as they rest in your arms we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd. We're going to be recessing. I just want to remind us, those who are going to Medores, that you Get into your vehicles and be ready to follow behind the earth as Bishop leads the procession. And I would want to further remind you that we continue to observe social distance at the graveside. So please. Please let us remember that as we go to the great side, we continue to observe social distance. Right, we're going to be singing the recessional hymn. I don't know if the Paul Bears are here. If you are, oh sorry, we don't have any bodies, so we don't need them. You won't need the Paul Bears until you get to the cemetery. All right, so we'll sing, stand and sing. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, time shall be no more. Morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. Again, I want to recognize our police officer. She was, he was Rose, a main person who would um, be with Rosa and most, if not all, uh, funerals. <laughs> 